Hello. I'm going to demonstrate uh, programming a few freshly um, constructed neurons. You can see um, everything's all soldered together and the uh, headers are in place, the reset loops are landed. Um, looks like that one has a solder bridge that I missed, so we'll put them aside for now. Um, but these other four I'm going to program um, first using a test routine that'll light the LED up white um, and then using the actual VO4 runtime software. Um, and then after I do that, I'll connect them together, kind of demonstrate some basic operating principles. Um, you can see um, I'm basically inside the same directory I have in the, uh, in, the, in the GitHub repository. You know, I'm in the run directory, so we'll go up a little bit. We'll go to the VO4 test to start with. Um, and everything from here on out is going to be uh, filmed through this very handy um, filming stand that I have. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. No. Yes. Okay. Stay in focus. Alright, so CDVO4 test. I'm going to uh, take my um, Adafruit programmer. It's got the um, the adapter that I had mentioned previously and um, I've done this enough times that I've kind of memorized where the wires go. I'm going to plug it in for programming. Connect that reset jumper to the loop. Nothing happens. Um, and I've already run make, so I already have a hex file prepared. So sudo make install. There we go. The LED lights up white. So we know that things are working right. Um, just really quick, I'm going to run through and test the other three neurons and make sure that they have been programmed or have have been uh, assembled correctly. The most the most common defect, if I manage to solder the chip on properly, not backwards, um, is that one of the channels of the LED don't work, so it comes out purple or it comes out you know some other color. Uh, one more time. All right, um, we're just going to set this one aside. Looks like we might have a, might have an un, uh, an unknown defect in that guy. Bad example. Oh, that one's already programmed. No one saw that. Another bad example. We might just end up with two neurons that we're testing here. Typically, my um, you know I'm at about an 85, 80 to 85 percent first run yield, and then I can usually rework you know, a solid 10% of them. Um, all right, so we're two for four, two for five. That's not too good. Um, I'm going to go back to the uh, VO4 run directory. Okay, I've already run make, so I'm just going to have to install the firmware. And basically what it's going to do um, is install the runtime software, and then the, the LED is going to glow at 12.5% brightness. Um, it's also going to be. It's also going to be um, changing the clock speed to eight megahertz. Um, so a lot of stuff happens with that make file. There you go. That LED right now is at uh, twelve and a half percent brightness because it's at a value of one hundred, but there's eight hundred ticks in the loop, so it's off for seven hundred of those eight hundred ticks. And it should be going at one kilohertz, but I think I screwed up a bunch of timing stuff, and it's actually going a lot slower than that. But Fast enough that you can't see it flashing, which is nice. Sudo make install. Looks like we got two neurons that are working. Um, I'm going to disconnect my programming harness for right now. Uh, this is just another power harness I have. It's connected to a USB hub on my desk. Um, it's got a current measurement loop. I can pop this out, hook it up to a digital voltmeter, uh, you know, uh, figure out what, what kind of current a, a neuron system is pulling. Um, you can power neurons from any one of their dendrites. You know, they basically, sh everything shares um, power and ground using 30 mil traces. So should be should be good to send power pretty much anywhere with a pretty low drop. Um, I'm going to start by just showing what happens when you change the current potential level of the neuron. So right now we're at a, we're at a ground state. Um, our membrane potential is zero. Um, and the top three dendrites and then the left and the right middle dendrite, um, left and the right dendrite on the lower level, those are excitatory, so they 
raise the current potential level of the neuron, whereas the um, the center dendrite lowers the current membrane potential level. Um, and that's indicated by the LED changing um, towards red, um, so it'll turn yellow when I uh, increase the potential level, it'll turn blue when I decrease the potential level. Um, make that nice and visual, I'm going to be using um, one of my little snap action switches. And again, this is just this is just shorting um, V plus into the into the line in um, into the I/O line of the microcontroller. So, excitatory first. See, I hold it down and it turns yellow. That means and it's flashing because of a refresh rate thing on the phone. Ignore that; it's not flashing in real life. That's a frame rate thing. Um, so you can see that it's uh, it's kind of yellow orange right now. That's because I have the um, set point uh, at 70 so every um, every uh, ex excitation changes the potential level by 70 um, out of 100 so 70 percent so we're at 70 percent right now see that if I release it it'll fade back to green see if I can zoom in a little bit yeah I'm getting these weird lines that's okay fades back to, to green if I were to do that really fast, my potential level would start to stack up, and eventually I would, uh, pretty quickly actually, I would, I would exceed the potential threshold. I'd have an action potential event. It would flash, and then it would turn blue. Um, now I'm plugged into the inhibitory input. I only have one of those as, as it's programmed right now. Um, and when I hold this down, you can see it turns blue. So right now we're at negative 70. I release it. It fades back to, to a resting state. Um, and I can hit this a bunch of times, and I really drive it deep into the uh, into the inhibitory range. Um, yeah, I could connect this here; it wouldn't do anything. Now, I have these exciters, I call them, which basically do what a switch does, but it allows me to hold a neuron at a fixed potential. So I plug that in; it holds it at a uh, you know uh, an elevated potential. And now, when I hit the switch. When I hit the switch, it's going to um, bring the membrane potential of the neuron above its action potential threshold. We'll have an action potential. It will send a pulse through its axon to anything connected. Nothing's connected right now. Um, then you'll see it fade through blue and back to green as it goes through its refractory period and then uh, then returns to its resting state, which in this case is uh, is actually an elevated resting state because of that that uh, that element right there. So. Catch that, blink, and then fade back to the current resting state, and the current resting state is is elevated. Um, now, of course, if uh, if I were to put this switch into the inhibitory section, um, I just bring it right back down to a to a ground state, to a to a level of zero. Um, then it'll then it'll fade back up to its uh, higher resting state. So, oh well, I'm good. I'm gonna leave this connected right here. Um, where it gets kind of interesting is when you um, you take an axon, uh, connect it to it, the axon terminal of a neuron, and then connect that to the dendrite of a downstream neuron. Um, and now, when an action potential occurs on the first neuron, it sends a pulse to the second neuron, which then bumps up. Um, I don't have a I don't have an exciter installed here, um, so it won't you know, actually have its own action potential, but um, you can see it uh, exciting. Now, I can insert one of those exciters. I have I have a lot of exciters. They're very important. I use them constantly. So, now things are getting a little bit more interesting. 